So one of the problems with uh, making your own custom servers is cooling devices that are meant for actual servers. And things like this HPA 330 here in the back tend to run really hot. And there's a limited number of things you can do to cool them. So I could direct attach a fan on top of the heat sink, but there's not a lot of space for that to be effective where it is in this case. And I could move it to a different slot and put a fan on it, but then I would lose some of the space for the PCI slot. And another thing I can do is I can run the fans faster, but I would like my fans to, you know, be somewhat quiet. So what you need to do is make your own custom fan shroud. And that will help guide the air over the card. And unfortunately in my case I still have to run the fans at 100% but that's because these fans don't really move a lot of air um, at the lower speeds. So whoops but uh, this air shroud is definitely the way to go. So to get to this point um, where we are now took a lot of steps and a lot of experimentation. And what I started with is basically cardstock-ish material. Uh, you can use like an old cereal box or whatever that's clean. And I kind of came up with the general shape that I wanted, as you can see here, and kind of figured out where I wanted the fan to be. And then from there I did testing, made sure it worked. And I have scraps of plexiglass in my office so I thought maybe you know I'd try using that to make an air shroud which got me this disaster and this almost fits I don't want to shove it in there just because it'll the thickness of it's a little too thick and it might actually damage something but this almost fits and would have worked actually it would have been kind of cool but um plexiglass is really hard to bend if you don't have the right tools and um I basically was improvising and trying to see if I could make it work without the right tools. And I ended up getting my hands on a thinner sheet, which uh, ended up turning out as a disaster because I used too much heat. I tried the temperatures that the internet recommended, but for some reason, like I could blast this at 300F for five minutes and it wouldn't soften or bend. Um, so then I just kind of get pissed off and Oh uh, man, I think, I think I did this at 800. Oh no. Yeah, uh, so 800 is definitely too hot. <laughs> um, but, I mean, this kind of got close, but yeah, it probably would work. But, um, so yeah, plexiglass is definitely a no. I would avoid plexiglass. Um, then I got lucky and I found this mysterious sheet of translucent plastic in my junk drawer. I know now it's probably polypropylene, but I can't figure out what its origin was because it's basically eight and a half by 11 before I trimmed off this edge. And I made this shroud, which, uh, almost fits. It's a little too long for the current configuration. Um, originally I was just going to have the fan sitting there on the board before I built that hard drive cage. Um, and this worked out nice, but I was afraid to actually dial this, this sheet in because this was the only one I had. So I spent two days going to every possible store I could, seeing if I could find it. Michael's, Hobby Town, Hobby Lobby, um... Office Depot, Staples, Lowe's, or not Lowe's, Home Depot. Did I say Home Depot already? I don't know. Uh, Ace Hardware. Like, I went basically everywhere but Menards and uh, Lowe's. But, yeah, nobody has um, 8.5 by 11 uh, sheets of polypropylene. And um, that was kind of a bummer. So I did some more digging around my office and I found these file folders. These are just plastic file folders you can buy anywhere on, online or at your office supply store. And realize it's the same material based on texture and just how it behaves. The bummer is this is 
I don't know how thick it is. I'm kind of estimating since I don't have the best way to measure stuff, but I think this is like 0.3 millimeters versus this being 0.5. This would have been a little nicer because it's more rigid and it will hold its form if you bend it. I've spent, spent some time trying to flatten it out so it doesn't curve like it used to. But yeah, so couldn't find this locally. I thought about buying it online, but I didn't trust it, that I'd get what I want without actually seeing it. But um, yeah, so I resorted to chopping up a file folder. Luckily, the file folder is big enough to do what I need, whether I, you know, need one that was super extremely long or if I needed one that was just narrow like that. And once I realized what I was working with, I got a piece of uh, printer paper, full size. And I did some measuring and I kind of figured out what I wanted, which is kind of where I got this. And then as you can see, I changed my mind. I decided I wanted slightly different profiles. Um, once I got that all figured out, I drew my lines down this uh, eight and a half sheet. sheet. Oh no, these are scrap pieces actually. <laughs> I forgot. Um, I drew my lines down the piece of paper and kind of got my profile after I folded it up and stuff. Um, this isn't supposed to be connected like this, but I kind of did my, my forming. Let's see if I can get that right. There we go. And got my shape. As you can see. You can also use the paper for testing but it's not very rigid and it's kind of frustrating to work with compared to the cardstock like material because it'll hold its shape and it's not all floppy and stuff but yeah i've tested this design i made sure you know everything lined up the way i wanted it to and then from there um i didn't just straight transfer this to the paper or the plastic i mean because i already knew what my dimensions were going to be so what I ended up doing was I ended up drawing the lines that I needed here. I made, so I drew, you know, the 75 millimeter gap and then the 70 millimeter gap and then the 65 millimeter gap. I cut that out and then I folded my general, general shape that I needed. And then from there, I kind of double checked my measurements and played around. Originally I was going to have this angle over towards the fan. So... So this side would have butted up against the fan, but I kind of realized that getting these angles were going to be kind of hard. Um, the nice thing about this stuff, since it's uh, polypropylene, it's pretty easy to work with, unlike acrylic and uh, other types of plastic they use for this plexiglass stuff. So basically, or those fold lines, but basically once you have your line drawn, what you can do, oops, I should have maybe cut a bigger piece, is you can kind of pinch it to fold it, and then you get that line on the top of your fold, and then you just kind of slowly work your way down pinching it until you get the profile you want. And you don't want to overdo it because at least with these thin file folders, it is possible to snap it. So once you get it close, and I got my 90 degree angle there, you should be good. Um, so yeah, that got me the channel, but then I needed the offshoot, so it actually would line up with the uh, edge of this fan, or th this edge of the fan that is, um, which gave me this little weird triangular gap here. I need to flatten those out. Those kind of curled up on me. Um, I didn't want to try heat welding this. I figured it'd be kind of hard. So what I ended up doing was I cut tabs. I have that drawing on me. Um, I'll put a picture up on the screen of what this looked like before I unfolded it. Or before I folded it and weaved it in. But basically what I have are these long straight tabs. And then towards the end... They get wider and what I did was I weaved it into the plastic so I cut three slits and then with these little tabs that stick out 
you can see the fold lines. I folded them inwards so they would fit through these slots I cut. So I stuck it in one and then I poked it up the next and then stuck it down the other one. So it's kind of woven in like a, like you would sew a fabric. And yeah, that's kind of what I did. Since this was longer and I didn't want to fight with two of these uh, tabs sticking out, what I ended up doing was I cut some slits because this, this slit here was this wide. And I cut some slits so I could fold part of that under and part of it over just so it would be a little bit more stable. Now, as you can see, it's not perfect. Uh, it doesn't line up quite right. And I should have folded this corner a little bit more aggressively before I put that little cap on. But overall, this has worked well. And I've been able to maintain a 51C temperature on that HPA 330 with the fans at 100%. Uh, basically that HPA 30 is doing 30 degrees Celsius above ambient temperature, which um, if it weren't for that shroud, if I turned this on, even with the fans at 100%, if this shroud wasn't there, it would instantly spike up into the 60s. So it's definitely, uh, it's definitely working well. But uh, yeah, hopefully I did a good job, I guess, of explaining the steps and the process I went through. Um, you know, if you can get yourself some thicker plastic, I would recommend that. I'd say, you know, half mil or whatever. You might even be able to do a millimeter. Um, get, I forget how thick this plexiglass was, but I think it was somewhere near a millimeter. Um, this particular stuff is acrylic. But I wouldn't recommend this unless you already have the ability to do the heat forming necessary. So... Yeah, otherwise, I mean, that was uh, really simple. If I wanted to, I could make another one of those, maybe have dedicated cooling for the memory or run an air channel to the CPU fan so the CPU is not breathing in air from the drives up front. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. hopefully that was interesting, and thanks for watching.